Yahweh. All right. First and foremost, I want to say, Ka Halal Yahweh, Wa Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And salutation to Yah, completions his word in truth and sincerity. All right. Uh, so I wanted to do a video on uh, learning to not love your life so much. You know, learning not to cleave onto your life. You know, it's something that I've been meditated on for the past week or two. I know the Lord has been putting that on my spirit for a while because, you know, hey, being being this truth, you you automatically see how much people love their life, how much more people love their life than the people who are than the, than the people who are in this truth, right? Because the people who are in this truth, our life right now, there's nothing beautiful about it other than being in the truth. That's the only beautiful thing about it, you know, and everything that comes with that truth. So, uh, with uh, further ado, I'm just going to go into the scriptures, you know. And Lord willing, you brothers get edified by this. So, I'm going to start off with um, Revelation 12. And uh, Revelation 12 and 11. I'm going to read the 12. I'm going to read. Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Okay, the blood of the Lamb is talking about Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is that sacrificial lamb. Okay, and through his uh, through his death, through his sacrifice, he, we, uh, basically, we were redeemed back to the Most High, Yahweh. You know, because in, in the time of Judges, uh, Yahweh turned his back on us because we were, you know, we were just going off too much. You know, we as a nation uh, were disobeying the Most High to an extreme extent. You know, so the Most High basically uh, turned his back on us and has sent his own only begotten Son to reestablish the new covenant. Okay, and as in the time of old, uh, Israel would sacrifice animals. For the old covenant, but now the ultimate sacrifice was Yahweh Shai. You know that's why he was known as the sacrificial lamb. Okay, and through him, Israel has been bought back. But firstly, the elect, his elect, right? The people that were with him. You know, for you brothers who can receive it, that are deep in this. But the people that were with him, the elect that were with him, in the beginning, creating the heavens, the earth, the suns, uh, the sun, the moon, stars. You know. And 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 so on and so on. So uh, for those uh, for those uh, for the elect first, and then second go around all of Israel. You know, but two thirds of Israel must be put to death before they come before they start to re receive the blessings and the promises of the Most High Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai. You know, because uh, they're just too wicked right now, too proud. They need to be reincarnated and brought back in the right minds through the seed of the elect okay because the seed of the elect or the elect themselves are going to be, be changed all right they're going to be have whole they're going to have the minds like pursuant to hebrews 8 and 10 starting from 10 or, 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 or if uh, i'm not mistaken it's 10 and 8 the law is going to be put into our nature. It's going to be put into our inward, inward parts. So it's going to be, the law is going to be become nature for us. You know, so we're going to be perfect and we're not going to go off. So that being said, our children are not going to go off and they're going to be perfect. And our children are going to be the rest of Israel. Okay, and it's not like there's a number to, to Israel. You can't number Israel, you know. We know that David tried to do that and the Most High severely punished him doing that you know so um it says uh revelation 12 and 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony that's right because right now your whole as soon as you came to this truth your whole life really your whole life has been a testimony okay you're you're supposed to be you're supposed to use examples like the apostles and the elders okay and other brothers who who senior brothers who have been in this thing for 10 years plus, they use their testimony to what? To uplift us. Uplift up, up, lift us younger brothers. So I could, 
you know, because they've went through the same thing, and most of the time are still going through the same thing, you know. So, you know, through we we you overcome this thing firstly through Yahweh Shai basically opening that door, getting our foot into the door, right? Because we don't know if we're saved. We have faith that we're saved. Those of us who are doing this work in truth and sincerity, we have faith that we're saved. We hope that we're saved, but we don't exactly know, all right? So it's kind of you know, the same thing as having your foot into the door, you know? Kind of like when someone gets you a job, they get you the interview, but then you're not guaranteed a job, right? You're not guaranteed to keep the job if you don't work well. After you get the job and you start working, everything else is on you, right? So you're not going to be able to mess up on the job, call in sick whenever you want, come in late, and still keep the job just because of the man that you know or just because of the man that got you the job. You know, that's the same thing as Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai opened that door for the elect to come in because many are called and few are chosen. So many are going to be called into this thing and come into the truth, but few are going to be chosen. A lot of them are going to fall out. They're going to lose their jobs. They're going to get fired, so to speak, because this is the job, man. All right? So it says, uh, again, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. So that's the point I wanted to hit. They loved these, the elect, loved not their lives unto death. Because, guess what? A lot of people love their life. Okay? They love this, they love it so much that they're willing to do anything to, to stay, to stay alive. And you know, in all actuality, on this side of the kingdom, on this side, that's a weakness. That's a strength. That's a great, great weakness, man. Because, for example, perfect example is when the chip starts being uh, uh, um, starts being uh, forced on uh, on on Jake, okay, on the whole world. But you know, starting off with Jake and the men that are in this truth or claim to be in this truth, you're gonna really see. Then you'll see who the prophets are because. A lot of them are going to go through hell where they're not going to be able to eat. You know, the women's going to have the chip. You know, they're gonna, they have, a lot of the brothers have kids in this thing. And they're going to want to feed their children. Okay? You, you could be going through torture because you're not taking the chip in the concentration camps. Or you could be put to death because you're not taking the chip in the concentration camps. Or because you're not taking the chip. Okay? So, there's multiple ways you can be you can suffer just for not taking that chip man so it's really going to be a serious time to try people man and those believe me those people who love their life who cleave onto their life so much are going to be the ones to take the chip okay those because those who cleave onto their life so much are not ready to die for Yahweh Shai you think Yahweh Shai would be ready to die, would be able to die so easy not it wasn't easy for him to die but would be able to die if he cleaved onto his life so so much no he was a man it said that he was a man acquainted with grief and infirmity so he was always going through hell okay someone who's always going through hell compared to someone who's always living in prosperity the one who's living in prosperity obviously loves his life more than the one who's living going through hell so in all actuality People, the man that's going through prosperity is looked upon as a man with so much strength because he has all these riches and all that, and all that power. But this man has more strength when it comes to it, man. Because at the end of the day, you put a gun to this man's head or you um, starve him. The man who's rich, you starve him or do whatever, torture him. He'll do whatever you want, and he becomes weak. But tell me, how can you how can you threaten a man that's already ready to die? There's you can't you can't do like that's it you can't add any more to him you can't do any more to him he's already ready to die so anything you do or say to him it's not gonna affect his uh his uh his uh his his train of uh his motive his train of thought if he's focused on dying and for this purpose okay you you're not you you can't change that ultimately it's all through the Lord right the Lord puts the spirit on you to be like that okay. So that's why we get honestly, const we constantly got to keep doing this work in true sincerity, and praying, and fasting unto the Lord, that He keeps, that He keeps renewing our spirit and building us, building us up. Because this is gonna be a 
the times that are coming are going to be heavy times, brothers. This is going to be heavy, heavy times, and it's coming soon. Even the very it said it said that if it were in Matthew twenty four, uh, that even the very elect might have been deceived. You know, roughly paraphrasing. So it's going to be some heavy times. Verse twelve. It says so. I'm going to read verse eleven again. So slacker, but you know, just to really get my point out. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of the of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a little but a short time. So Esau's gonna be coming out here with some he's gonna be going out rampage, man, with with, with the chip and with everything else that he has that's part of his agenda all right and for you brother and for you guys you know starting with Nate that are living nice in prosperity like they're living nice and in prosperity live it up man because this is right now you know this is your heaven you're living nice okay but when it comes to the kingdom you're gonna be a shame face you're still gonna be Israel you're still gonna you know be uh Lower kings, lower class, uh, compared to the elect, lower uh, class kings. But you're going to be shamefaced, man. Okay? Alright, uh, let's do jump to Revelation 2 and 7. And it reads, He that he that hath an ear, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, overcometh, Will I give to eat of the tr of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the of the paradise of Yahweh, the tree of life, man? That's right. Because once, because we're not really none really die unto the Lord. Okay, so when you actually pass away, uh, or so called die, you actually are asleep. And your spirit goes back up to the Most High. You know, for you brothers who understand reincarnation. Your spirit goes up to the most high, and then you're brought back again, okay, after a certain amount of time, a generation or two. So, um, that happens, but you really never die, so you're always being recycled, okay? You're always coming back and coming back and coming back. Hence why you have this thing called uh, deja vu, you know? You, you kind of remember this, or, 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 for example... Why you just suddenly click with a brother, you know? Because maybe you guys were brothers in the past, like, you know? You know, there's so many examples that prove reincarnation that, you know, we as we as uh, people go through every day, okay? So, um, it says uh, to give them the tree of life. The tree of life is to live forever, man. Because if you, if I recall going back to Genesis, um, I'm just going to get that real quick. Bear with me one minute, Slacker. Okay, hold on. Um... Like it. I'm just trying to find it. I'm just gonna find it in the blue out of here. Give me one second. Thank you. 
Okay, fine. This is Genesis. Uh, this is Genesis three and twenty-three. I'll start from. It says therefore the Lord Yahweh Power sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence from whence he was taken. So he drove. Uh, you know what? Let me actually start from twenty. So okay, he says, and Adam called his wife wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living uh, mother of all living unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord Yahweh power make coats of skin and clothed them and clothed them and the Lord Yahweh power said behold the man is become as one of us to know good and evil and now, let, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Okay, so that's what the tree of life is about. It's living forever. You know? Because, just roughly, just to summarize it, because I don't want to go into the whole thing, and pick, you know, get into a new topic, basically. Um, the, when it says, uh, Um, onto Adam his wife, the Lord made coats of skins. Basically, is giving them. Uh, basically, the coats of skins is identity, you know, because the precepts of that is Philippians uh, three and one. You can read one to five, you know. So it's their identity, and then it says, um, and the Lord and the Lord power said, behold, man has become as one of us to know good and evil. Because when they, you know, uh, what was it called? Metaphorically ate the the tree, the the tree of good of of no tree of knowledge, which is not actual tree or actual fruit is these different philosophies and uh, ideologies of the other nations. Okay, because you had Adam and Eve, and then you had everybody else. You know, you had everybody else that were not like that didn't have laws, statutes, and commandments, so to speak. Well, exactly. So, the Lord, so basically, once Adam and Eve knew both sides, the Lord said they become become like one of us, you know, to know both sides. And they said, let's shut up the garden unless they put their hands forth and eat the tree of life. The tree of life is forever. It's, it's to live forever. Okay, because when we're in the kingdom, we're going to live forever. We're never going to die. We're never going to die. We're going to live forever. You know, that's why Israel's always, that's why Israel's going to be uh, innumerable. And we're not, and we can't only live on Earth because there's gonna be too much of us. We're gonna have to move to different planets, you know. Some brothers will own different planets or whatever the Lord gives you to according to your portion. Okay, so that's what I was talking about when we, when we were going when we read uh, Revelation two and seven, because we we didn't get it back then, but we're gonna get it on this side now, you know. It says Revelation two and seven. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the pre presence of Yahweh. So, you know, once we go through all hell, the Most High, once we get through uh, Jacob's trouble and we don't take the chip, Lord willing, those of us who are of the elect, okay, we're going to get cut off into those chariots. And we're gonna get our bodies changed. Our law is gonna become nature, and then we're gonna live forever, man, through all of that. Okay, the Lord's not gonna suffer us to die anymore, or to sleep anymore, to you know, so-called die. Okay. Um. Seven, and then let me jump down to uh, verse twenty-six, and it says, uh, "And he that overcometh." And keepeth my works unto the end. To the end for some of us is so-called death. Okay? The end for some of us is so-called death. And I say so-called death because, again, none really die unto the Lord. You know? We're reincarnated. So it says, uh, um, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give the power over... Well, I'll give power over the nations. So, listen, man. 
loving your life so much, cleaving onto your life so much, is a great weakness. And that's not that's something that we should learn not to do. Okay, because we know this life is full of full of deceit, vanities, and abominations. Okay? You can't can't go a day without committing sins. You can't you can't even go an hour sometimes without committing a sin. Alright? You can actually you can't go an hour without committing a sin. You know? Every day, every second you committed some kind of sin, gets out of your control. Cause you live in this wicked kingdom. You know? That's not a life to cleave on to. If you if you're in the right spirit and Lord you how about Shinny Shai is dealing with you, that's not a life to cleave on to, man. Okay? Now there's 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 times where Yahweh Shai Yahweh Bashin Shai gives you a break, you know. You know, you, you have your okay times where you might have you might have uh you know, came into a little bit of money where you, you have enough where you paid all your bills, you took care of all your expenses, that you have a little bit left over so you where you can have you know a couple glasses of wine with the brothers, you know, and, and watch some videos and you know, eat some food. You might have one. You have those days time to time, but most of the time you don't. You know, most of the time you're not living in those kind of. You don't have those kind of days because you're, we're in slavery here. We're here to serve slaves. We're here to serve Esau. Okay, we're here in slavery. So most of the time of us being here is going to be hell. Okay, but you got Jake living, trying to make their hell a comfortable, a comfortable hell. You know, showing how wicked they are, man, and how undisciplined Jake really is. You know, after going off and disrespecting the Most High and basically crucifying Yahweh, you no, know, not basically, they did crucify Yahweh Shai and killed their prophets. They still and they still don't want to fully uh, atone for their sins. They want to atone for their sins as long as long as not at their as long as not at their uh, ex, as long as not at their expense, where they don't where they lose they lose uh, comfort. You know, showing you they're undisciplined, man. That's why the Most High, Yahweh Bashin Yahshai, is gonna rain hell on top of this, uh, this kingdom, especially on Israel. He says, "Start with my sanctuary." You know, start at my house with my sanctuary. Roughly paraphrasing, so Israel's gonna get it first, man. You know, and especially us, those of us, those of us who are of the elect. You know, we're really gonna be tried. Those of us who claim to be, uh, the claim to be in this truth. Are gonna be really are really gonna be tried in this thing, man. So, is this grace period right now that's really quickly, uh, you know, um, closing up because the Lord's closing the breaches thereof. It it's it's time to really meditate on the scriptures, and more and more now than ever to meditate on the scriptures. Because you should always be meditating on the scriptures, but more now than ever to meditate on the scriptures and stay in the spirit of. Of being humble and not really cleaving onto this life that you have right now, you know, just trying to get by, literally living daily bread, day to day, you know, just like the scriptures say, right? Um, just have two more scriptures here, and I'm gonna close up. John sixteen. And 33. And it reads, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Okay, so we have, you know, we have examples of going through hell and overcoming it, man. Yahweh Shai, okay. Uh, uh, Job, you know, the uh, all the apostles and all the men of the Lord went through their own type of hell and overcame it, man. So, who are we to say, oh, we, we you know, for the time being, I want to live comfortable in my hell and then and be, a, and be part of the elect. It doesn't work that way, man. Nothing good come easy. That's simple. Okay? You, you, you gotta grind for this thing, man. You, you really gotta grind for this thing and even when you grind for this thing, you're not even sure, so you have to have faith above everything. Above everything is about having faith, man, according to knowledge, having zeal according to knowledge. Because there's a lot of jigs that have zeal, okay, for the Lord. 
but they they have zeal for the Lord and they're watching, you know, all these different pastors that are millionaires, okay, and they don't have the truth. So the zeal is not according to knowledge. So you got to have the zeal and you got to have it according to knowledge, man. Faith without work is dead. So it's about, it's, it's, in the end of the day, it's about staying in the spirit, man. You got to try to stay in the spirit as much as you can. Cause that's where you get, that's where you get the the best output, you know, of your day. You know, you go through your day, you try to do the best you can to serve the most high. Each and every day you wake up, you want to wake up with the mindset of, I'm going to do the best I can to serve the most high, according to knowledge, okay? And you can only do that if you're feeding and 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 uh, acting upon spir spiritual uh, upon your spirit, spiritual thoughts, not carnal thoughts, okay, not your emotions, but your spiritual ones, according to the scriptures, okay. That's what you should be doing. We're servants. Paul said, "I'm a prisoner of Yahweh Shai, a prisoner." Okay, prisoners don't get to leave jail whenever they want and come back whenever they want. And bring whoever they want in and do whatever they want. They're strictly under orders and they have to abide by, by those orders or else there's consequences. That's the same exact same thing as it, as it is in this truth. You have orders. You have to abide by those orders. And if you don't, there are some severe consequences. Like not going on the highways is a severe consequence to that. Okay? You have to go on the, on the highways. Okay? You have to do this work. Making videos. You know, studying the scriptures, study to show, show that self approved. The workman needs not to be ashamed, roughly paraphrasing. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Alright? So there's multiple things you gotta do in this in this truth, but you, but you can only do those things if you are driven by the spirit, not by the flesh. The flesh doesn't want to do any of this stuff. As you all should know, because we all used to be Gentiles. Okay? We were all Gentiles. We were all in the world doing things of the flesh. You would have your spiritual moments, you know, because at the end of the day, Jake is spiritual, you know. But right now, we're in a place where we 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 strive and act more on our carnal side than our spiritual side, you know. And that's just Jake. So, being in this truth, having the more you you how about you try to have mercy on you and bring you into this truth. You got to wake up with the mindset of serving him the best way possible. If that means unto death, that means unto death, man. That's simple. Yahushai did it. Paul did it. Got stoned to death. And then the most High put the spirit back into him. He wasn't finished his work. He went back into the city that stoned him, man. Okay? Stephen got stoned to death. Okay? A lot of the other apostles died. All the apostles died. For Yahweh Shai. And it's truth, man. Yahweh Shai died for this word, man. For this truth. Okay? So, so it's all about not cleaving onto your life. Because if you cleave onto your life too much, like I said, I can't keep expressing this enough. If you cleave onto your life too much, you're going to take a trip. You're going to fall out. Okay? It's all about having a balance in the end of the day, but your balance should be more... You know, of a 60-40 hate my 60-40, 60 being I hate my life more than, and a 40 being I love my life, you know, or 80-20, you know, like for me, the only thing beautiful about my life is being in this truth, that's it, everything else is hell, and tribulation, that I, that I constantly have to overcome each and every day, okay, uh, my last scripture here is Romans 8, and uh, 33. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 33, and it reads, Who shall lay anything to the charge of Yahweh's elect? Yahweh Bashim Yahshai's elect. It is Yahweh Bashim Yahshai that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Yahweh Shai that died, yea, rather, that is risen again.
who is even at the right hand of Yahweh, who also maketh maketh intercession for us. Okay, so he's working on 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 the elect's behalf to 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 uh, to to have us keep going, man. Um, verse thirty-five it says, "Who shall spare us from the love of Yahushua?" Or separate slack. Who shall separate us from the love of Yahweh Shai? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? That is as it is written. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Okay, you cannot break that down any. You cannot have written that any better, man. It said, "What shall separate us from the love of you, Howard Shai, man? Death. Uh, uh. It says, uh, tribulation, distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness." Or peril, or the sword. Nothing shall set. If you're a true prophet of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, as you claim to be, okay, you there should be nothing that shall separate you from Yahweh Bashim Yashai, especially if you're the elect. All right, nothing shall separate you. Nothing will separate the elect from Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Those are the men that you're gonna see, who are gonna basically be tied up, you know, chained up. With all type of scars and cuts on them, maybe bleeding out, and even though they've went through some physical pain, mental pain, you know, been tortured, maybe even seen their family die right in front of them, they're still gonna spit in Esau's face and laugh at him when he says take the chip, and they're gonna still declare you have the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. Those are the men that are of the elect. And that will not have anything separate them from the love of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Those are the men. Alright. It says that for as it is written. Verse 36. As is it written. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. And uh, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. At the end of the day. We're sacrifices for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, we're sacrifices for this truth. We're the defenders of this truth. Okay? When you when you and when you have a king and he has a uh, you have a king's guard, they call it, his right hand man, he had made an oath and sworn an oath to die for the king. Well guess what? Yahweh Shai is our king. Okay? And 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 we and 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 Yahweh and and Yahweh's over overseer over our king, okay. And we, when you first came in this truth, you may you had made a covenant and an oath unto Yahweh Bashim Yahshai that you were ready to die for His word, man. So this is a commitment, man. This is not something that it's uh that something that it's not something for entertainment or something to just to do. It's a commitment. This is. Something you do whether you're going through hell, you've been going through hell, whether you've had a horrible day, a good day, or a bad day. You do this thing, man. The Lord told Job in uh, 33 and 3, or 30 and 3, if I'm not mis mistaken, gird up that loins like a man. You know? You know, it's not, this is not the time to complain about your day. Oh, I had a rough day. Oh, I worked 15 hours. My boss got at me. You know, I got gypped off on my pay. This and that and the third. Man, do you think any of that matters to you, Yahweh Bashim Yashai? No. Near, nor does it matter to anybody else. It says, work out thy own salvation. Okay, even though you do have the brotherhood, and you have brothers there who are sincere, who are here to help you, or there to help you, they're there to help you, but they can't save you. So at the end of the day, you got to do this on your own, man. And and, and 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 no one and no one's trying to hear trying to hear you complain about your day. Okay? Especially now you how about Shimmy Al Shai. You go through your day and you grit up that loan like a man, you take it and you keep serving the most high, you how about Shimmy Al Shai. 
the scripture in the Apocrypha. I can't, I don't remember what scripture it is, but it basically it says, don't let your sins weigh you down. You know, that's another example. A righteous man shall fall six times and get up seven. You must be prayer praising. The word seven means completion. So every brother has their, has their amount that they're going to go off. But if they're of the elect, they will repent, which means to turn away, not to do again. Okay? They will repent, and they won't do it again. Because everything is a learning process, man. You know, you might have, you might have uh, went off on the Sabbath. Well, you repent of that, pray for mercy, repent of that, and you don't do it again, man. Most has no joke. You can't keep messing up with him. Of, 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 you, can, you can't keep messing up with him on the same mistake. You know, it comes to a time where you should know better, you know? Okay? So with that, uh, close up, you know, and I hope you brothers got edified, man. And I want to say, Ka, Hala, Yahawa, Wa, Yahawa, Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, great millstone. Salutation to you, asking questions, word of true sincerity, man. And uh, remember, uh, like, like I said, man, don't cleave onto your life. Learn to not cleave onto your life. And, uh, and constantly stay in your spirit, man, because this we're, we're coming to the end here, man. It's coming soon, quickly, too, you know? So with that, I'm going to say, shalom.